How can I help you, sir? I've gone blind in both eyes. I see. <laughs> I don't. Oh my God. I know I said I was gonna do a video on reopening schools and I promise I'll do that. I just wanna make sure that I get that video perfect. I want you to have the best info. But what I got for you today is a laugh worthy, awesome medical meme review. Are you ready? Be don't take a panoramic image when watching Dr. Mike. Whoa, what happened to my fotch? Doc McStuffin's medical accuracy. <laughs> Grey's Anatomy medical accuracy. So obviously one looks way more diesel than the other one, but yeah, Doc McStuffins was dropping smart bombs. When I screamed at the gynecologist, it was just an ovary reaction. <laughs> Punny. It's an overreaction. Overreaction. Overy reaction. Overy action. Overy action. No, it still sounds like overreaction. Really. The intern's calling a consult, a consultant for a first time. You ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so you you do you could you you want you want him to do you something. This is an intern calling a consultant for the first time or presenting their case to an attending physician. When you're an intern and you have to present in a succinct, logical, quick way and you haven't done it in a while and you don't really know the consultant you're speaking to, it's really nerve wracking to present. You know, you have to be sharp, quick, because there's some consultants who are like, why are you wasting my time? What do you want? You know, as an attending physician now, I have residents present to me quite often, even medical students. I've gotten to the point where I can tell where some someone is in their training based on how well they present their cases. It's just, it's funny because he's sleeping, but at the same time he's like snoring and dreaming at the same time. So he's half kicking me, half shaking. His eyes are opening and closing, but he's dead asleep. Imagine you dying during the plague and this won't walk in. Authentic plague doctor masks. No way. Are these real? Dr. Mike makes a video and says something about sleeping well. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't get my full seven to nine hours last night and I'm quite sleepy. And it's not good because my performance suffers. I get a little delirious, get a little bit less motivated. So please try and sleep the consistent seven to nine hours. Trust me, listen to me, I'm losing it. Sustainable skincare advice from my dermatologist. One, avoid the sun at all costs. Two, use sunscreen before going to bed at night. Three, never think about the sun. Four, wear a wide brim hat in the shower. Five, if someone mentions the sun to you, report them to the authorities. The reason why we in the healthcare community and dermatologists specifically warn you about the dangers of the sun is not only, and this is obviously the most important reason, because of the cancer risk that the sun poses to your skin, but also the integrity of your skin changes, the appearance of your skin changes. And this is not only when it's really sunny out in the summer. Yeah, that's obviously dangerous because you can get sunburned and the more sunburns you have throughout your lifetime, the more predisposed you are to all sorts of cancers. But also, when it's cloudy, the UV rays are still banging. Why'd I say banging? It's a weird term for UV rays, but it's true. By the way, a lot of people assume that sunblock is the best protection from the sun. No, my friends, shade and staying out of the sun is the best protection from the sun. Covering up, whether that means an umbrella, a t-shirt, staying underneath a tree. Does anyone know CPR? Hey bear, slow motion, pee whoop, bear. <laughs> Oh, Bear's not a corgi, but this is adorable. And CPR should not take place in the back or on the kidneys. When you're hungry, but don't want to leave your bed to go out to eat. Come on, do gluconeogenesis. Oh, that's so cute. For those of you who don't know, gluconeogenesis is the creation of glucose through your liver. Me, ow, why does my neck hurt so often? My posture. <laughs> This really reminds me of the last TikTok video when the guy's like, shoulders up, chest out, neck forward and down. And then he just walks around like a dinosaur. Like, what is this thing? Posture is incredibly important aspect, not the only aspect of why your neck can hurt. Another thing I see quite often happening is my patients who are side sleepers, not use a pillow that has enough support. So remember, when you're sleeping on your back, you don't need much support because you really just need to align your uh, your spine. But when you lay on your shoulder on your side, 
Now there's more room for your head to collapse and fall. So you need something to sort of keep it propped up and you need a firmer pillow. There's actually specific pillows that are designated for side sleepers that I encourage a lot of my patients to check out. What my patient sees as I wake them up at 4 a.m. every morning to ask if they pooped. <laughs> oh my God, I remember these days. Like I would be on surgery as a med student. You come in at four, five, six a.m. and you're waking patients up and you feel so bad because you want them to get a good night's rest. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're evaluating their progress to create a plan. Should they go home? Do they have to stay? Present them to the surgeon so the surgeon can make their decision about if they need further treatment. Vaccines, act like virus to train the immune system. Virus actually enters body, immune system. Hey, I've seen this one. That's exactly how it works. You know, it's funny, I saw someone who's anti-vaccine say something like, if there was only a way we could make the virus enter our body without actually getting us sick, then that would solve all our problems. And I just face palmed so hard that I actually hurt my eye a little bit. It was like red for a few minutes. No one, me entering residency with all of the medical knowledge I've retained. <laughs> You know, it feels like that, but in reality, you know a lot more than you know. You just haven't accessed it all on demand. You've only accessed it, regurgitated on tests, but the more you sort of access it in the moment, even if you have to look it up in the moment, the more you're gonna get comfortable with accessing that information again. It's just about getting the key to unlock it. Me, any allergies to medications? Patient, grass, mold, cats, and mosquitoes. <laughs> I forgot what I asked the patient the other day. Oh, they were having a really bad case of cellulitis, which is a superficial infection of the skin. They had like some sort of bite and then it, it, they, they were scratching at it and there were excoriations and started spreading. Because of that, we needed to treat with an oral antibiotic. So I asked, do you have any allergies to any antibiotics? And they're like, I have a horrible pollen allergy. And I'm like, I understand why you're saying that, but the reason I'm asking about allergies at this given moment is because if I give you a penicillin antibiotic or a penicillin derivative antibiotic and you have anaphylaxis to that and your throat closes up, I've done a big boo-boo. When you slept for two hours and think coffee will... <laughs> <laughs> That's a busted up car. That looks like a Russian car called a Zhiguli. Don't try and Google it because I have no idea how that's spelled. And just so you know, the way coffee works is it blocks your adenosine receptors, which as you function throughout the day, you're using ATP and it's getting transformed from ATP, your energy molecule, to ADP, and you're having excess phosphate and adenosine floating around as the day goes on. Because you have this adenosine binding to those receptors, you're getting more tired. Caffeine blocks those receptors, therefore you get less tired, so you don't feel as sleepy. That being said, it only has a limited benefit over time in keeping you focused. Keeping you not sleepy is one thing, but keeping you focused is a whole different animal. So don't think that when you don't sleep 24 hours, and then you have a cup of coffee, you're all good. You're not back to baseline. You may not be sleepy, but your reflexes and all that are still shot. The average human body contains enough bones to make an entire skeleton. I just heard the funniest thing in the book that I'm reading. I don't, I don't even know what this meme said, by the way. I'm reading this book called This Is Going To Hurt, and I'm actually reaching out to the author to get him on this channel because it's such a dark, funny book. And he tells the story of when he's at a party with his friends and he's the only doctor, and it was pop trivia, and the question came up, how many bones are in the human body? And he didn't know what the answer was, and everyone judged him for it. He's like, that's not practical. No one would ever ask me that question on rounds. I would never know that information to help out a patient. And yet two of his friends knew, and he had no idea, and he felt super embarrassed. And I understand that struggle. Happens all the time. People ask me some weird stuff. Mike, what happens if I inhale apple cider vinegar? I'm like, I have no idea. They're like, well, aren't you a doctor? You walk into a patient's room and see this, what would you do? What would I do? I would just very confidently walk out and pretend I didn't see it. 3 a.m., medical student. <laughs> this looks like Chernobyl. I don't know why I feel like this is Chernobyl. I'm probably the worst example of late night studying the day or the weekend before an exam, but it's when I focus the best. Under pressure, that's sort of, it drove me. It doesn't work well for everyone. In fact, there's many people who should not do that. As a medical student, I highly advise you invest in two objects, two products, maybe three. One, a comfortable chair. Two, a nice lamp. And three, a money, money set of noise canceling headphones. I'm Dr. Ross Geller. Ross, please, this is a hospital, okay? That actually means something here. He's a paleo paleontologist, paleontologist, pale, 
paleontologist. Why am I having trouble saying that? By the way, Ross is my favorite, most relatable character from Friends. And fun fact, Dave Schwimmer and I share a birthday. What, what? Oh my God, or is he November 11th? Check out this comedian roasting my Instagram or check out you guys roasting me on Instagram. Which one are you gonna laugh at? Either way, it's me, but which video are you clicking on? Stay happy and healthy while clicking on these videos? Why am I shaking like this? I don't know. It's late, I haven't slept. Click.